All right, my friend, today we have to make a, a pretty difficult exercise, which is create a function that displays a number in a base system in the terminal. The number is given in the shape of an int and the radix in the shape of a string of characters. The base system contains all usable symbols to display that number. You have, of course, the 10 digits, the 10 symbols we use in base 10 to represent some values, the zero and the one for the binary base system, the 16 symbols for the hexadecimal representation, and then we have this very strange series of symbols, Pone Vif, which is of course an octal base because we have eight symbols. This is just to let you understand that we don't really care about the symbols, we care about the position of the symbol to represent the value. So for this specific exercise, you have to understand very well the difference between symbols and values. I made a video about this concept. I will give you a link. If I make you this question, do you know the difference between symbols and values and how they are related? Explain to me. If you don't have a clue how to respond to this question, but well, check my previous video. I will shed some light into this concept. If you, for example, don't understand this joke, well, you should definitely watch my video. Okay, you have to understand very well this idea, the detachment between symbols and values. Otherwise, this pony whiff for you doesn't mean absolutely anything. So the meat of the program is a function that is able to convert every value in whichever base system. Then we have some constraints. We have the function must handle negative numbers, of course. If there is an invalid argument, nothing should be displayed. Like for example, base is empty or size equal one. Base contains the same character twice, of course. The base with two equal symbols wouldn't make any sense, of course. I cannot anymore understand which specific value has a certain symbol. For example, in base 10, we have our 10 symbols. If the symbol one is repeated more than once, I don't know anymore which is the value carried by the symbol. Again, you have to understand the difference between symbol and values. And if the base contains plus or minus. By the way, I can have a base with a plus or minus. This can be a binary system. This can be plus maybe as the value one, minus as the value zero. But anyway, this is a constraint given by this exercise. And here we have the prototype. So a function that doesn't return me anything, takes an integer as an input and takes the various symbols of the base. Namely, it can take this series of base symbols. Okay, let's jump into the code and let's decipher step by step in an easy fashion this program. This is all the program. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of longish. It has many lines as well as many comments in which I try to explain extremely well what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, 204 lines, but many of the lines are not tied to the program itself. For example, this a toy at the bottom is just uh, for um, the main function because I'm gonna use the command line arguments for this program. You don't need to understand this concept by now, but I'm using the command line arguments to make it very easy to test my program. Let me show you. So I'm gonna compile my program and then I'm gonna launch it with some command line input. Again, I repeat to you, you shouldn't know by now this concept, but these are just inputs coming from the shell itself. The first input is the number, for example, 42. And the second input is the base. For example, I can use the binary base, 01. This is a string. Let's make it extremely clear that this is a string. Anyway, any input coming from the command line is a string. Even this 42 is a string. That's why I need the atoy function inside my program. Okay, let's launch it. You see, I have the binary representation of 42, which is 101010, of course. Then let's make, I don't know, in base four, it's two, two, two. Let's make uh, in base, uh, I don't know, in base eight. So I have eight symbols here from zero to seven. It's gonna be 52. Let's make in base 10, 42 in base 10, namely the value 42, how do you represent it with 10 symbols, namely base 10, <laughs> of course is the value itself, it's 42. You see the thing, your brain is so tailored to perceive values in this fashion that you cannot perceive like this choo 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 as 42 stuff or this 52 as 42 elements. You see all these numbers are exactly the same, are exactly the same value. The only thing that changes is the representation model. 
when we say base 2 we are saying hey for this specific base for this specific representation we only have two symbols for example a zero and a one i can also have a binary representation with i don't know with a k and with a j kj this is a binary base with two specific symbol k and j you see i have j k j k j k why well because j is representing the value one and k is representing the value zero as you know this is a positional number so we have the first level that represent the ones here we have the twos here we have the fours so you see these two numbers are exactly the same they follow the same principles the only thing that changes is the symbols they are both a binary representation but in the first case we use a zero for representing the value zero in the second case we use the letter k to represent the value zero so we have here zero per one zero one per two two zero per four zero okay then we have one per eight so we have ten 10 10 is equal to value 10 10 elements and then we have one for the 32 so we have 32 plus 8 plus 2 how much is that well it's 42 here we have the same exact idea we have the letter k that stands for 0 and j that stands for 1 so we have 2 plus 8 plus 32 understood it this is exactly 42 in this binary representation with these specific symbols now you can understand this final point this is an octal based system with this specific symbols pone vif so we can say 42 in the pone vif base system boom we get vn v is the value 5 and n is the value 2 you see so here we have 2 okay and then here we have 5 per 8 this is an octal based system so 5 per 8 40 plus 2 42 <laughs> you're getting it did it click and pay a lot of attention here you have the string with all the symbols and the index of every char is exactly the value carried out by that specific char for example this p as the value zero this n as the value two and this f as the value seven we have values ranging from zero to seven so we will exploit this positional value of these symbols in our program okay i think something already clicked in your mind now we're gonna go step by step into resolving this problem okay with our divide and conquer approach so we start from here we have uh, a little program that is able to convert a number in a specific base okay in this case i have the number i have declared a number n with the value 42. i want to convert this number in base 16 namely a base that contains 16 symbols like the hexadecimal base system that we use this program is doing something peculiar basically what it's doing is taking the number in this case 42 and at every iteration is gonna print the number model base namely it's gonna print 42 module 16 in this example and then it's gonna make a division for the base namely it's gonna do 42 module 16 printing the result and then making the division namely 42 divided 16 is gonna be 2 the loop is gonna continue until I will exhaust my value I'm gonna reach the value 0 let's see this program in action initially with base uh, 2 okay with a binary base all right let's run the program all right what we can see here so we start with 42 mod 2 of course I get the value 0 right because this is an even number mod 2 is always p0 perfect then i do 42 divided by 2 namely the base value itself i get 21. next i do the same operation i have 22 model 2 this is an odd number so i get 1 right same operation as before this time i get 10. 10 mod 2 what do i get 0 of course 10 is an even number so 0. and so on till the end till i reach the base case yeah we're gonna use recursion in this program so you need to understand very well what is recursion anyway so what is this program about what what is the the point of this look at the numbers that we have here we have zero one zero one zero one do you recognize this number my friend you see you have 42 in its binary form reversed if you read the number from bottom to top you have one zero one zero one zero which is exactly 42 in binary 
See, with this specific algorithm, namely taking a number, making the mod operation with the specific base value, in this case, is true because we have a binary base. So taking the reminder with that specific base value, I get a value which is, in the first iteration, the least significant symbol of that specific base. You see, I have one zero, one zero, one zero. This is the final zero of my binary representation. Cool. Let's try something different. This time you're gonna have base uh, eight, okay? Octal base. Let's relaunch the program. This time we have 52, you see, from bottom to top. We have 42 mod eight. What do we get? Two, right? Eight per five is gonna be 40 with reminder two, perfect. Then I do my division. 48 divided by eight is gonna be five with a reminder of two, you see here. And then five, mod eight is gonna be five. Cool. And then I do my division and it's gonna be zero. So we finished with our algorithm. 52 is the octal representation of my value 42. Why is that? Well, five per eight is gonna be 40 plus two, okay, 42. Let's go on. This time we're gonna make 42 base 10. 42 base 10, what, what are you saying? Well, you see, the algorithm, of course, valuable even with base 10. 42 is a value, is a 42 stuff, 42 elements that I represent with the base 10 in this case. So if I say 42 mod 10, I get 2, and 4 mod 10, I get 4. 42, the number itself, because this is the exact representation of the value 42 in base 10. Now let's do something different and we close with this first little program. It's going to be base 16. I run the program this time. You see what I get? I get 42 mod 16, I get 10. 10 because I have 16, 32 plus 10, which is a reminder, I'm going to get 42. Okay, this is the reminder of the mod operation. Then I do the same algorithm, divided 16, I get 2. 2 mod 16, what do I get? I get 2. So you see how this algorithm is laying all the numbers of my specific base system in a very efficient way. I think this is called the subsequent division algorithm. I don't recall very well the name, but never mind, it's not important. So you see you have 10 and 2. Hmm, this is base 16. Indeed, here I should have A, right? In base 16, the value 10 is represented by the letter A. Just arbitrary, we decided that the letter A is gonna be for the value 10, A, B, C, D, A, F. This is an arbitrary decision. It could have been very different, but nonetheless. So I need a trick here to write the letter A and not the value 10, okay? Here is another program to write the exact symbol that I want. You see this time I have a global variable which is base symbols. This is a char array that contains all the symbols that I want to print. You see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, which are the hexadecimal symbols that we decided to represent the hexadecimal values. The base value, of course, is 16 because we have 16 symbols, okay? With this array representation, I have a very cozy property that the position is equal to the value the symbol represents. For example, the symbol 2, the draw 2, is equal to the value 2, namely the position of this symbol, as well as the symbol A as the value 10 because it's in the 10th position, okay? Let's watch the program as well. I have my number, which is 42. I want to print it in base 16, okay? So I'm gonna run this standard program. As you can see, I have the same idea as before. Basically, I have the same true operation, 42 mod 16. But this time I am the symbol A, which is of course the value 10, it is the symbol which is in position 10. And true mod 16 is the following operation. It's gonna give me back the value 2, which is the symbol 2 in my array. So how do I get this property? Well, basically when I want to print the symbol, I'm gonna take it inside my array. How do I do that? Well, I take the value, like in the previous program, I take 42 mod base value. So 42 mod 16 in the first iteration is gonna be 10, right? So I take the symbol in position 10 in my base symbol array. You see, is this A? Did it click? Did you get the point? I have my series of symbols and then I just take the specific symbol which is in the exact position given the value I get from the operation which is the subsequent division algorithm, right? You take the reminder and then you divide the number by the base. So first iteration, n mod base value is going to be the value 10, namely I'm going to take a, which is in the 10th position. 
the following iteration i'm gonna get the value true why true because i have 42 divided 16 i get two you know with division i get truncation so base symbols in position two what do i have well i have the symbol two all right i'm getting the point so let's tweak a little bit this program i'm gonna write other symbols here like for example i'm gonna write qwerty this program will work exactly the same i have 16 symbols i've changed the letters a b c d and f with other letters what do you think is going to happen stop the video and really ponder this question here i have for the first iteration the value 10 and for the second the value 2 what is going to happen okay let's run again the code and you see this time what's happening i have the first iteration 42 mod 16 i get the value 10 what is 10 in my specific symbol set well is the letter q right the letter q which is in position 10 and for your symbol i have of course the um, the one in position in the second position so it's going to be two okay if in position two i write i don't know for example the letter k you see i have a k here what is going to happen well again i have q k <laughs> are you getting it i'm sure you do so you understand that i have a series of symbols that carry a specific value each symbol has a specific value which corresponds to its position that's perfect that's the main idea behind this this code okay now we return to the previous abcdf so the hexadecimal representation and this time we make a bigger number i don't know i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this number which is the maximum positive integer that you can represent okay so i'm gonna run the program as you can see i have for every level the letter f f f f f f f that's exactly the the right the right value and at the bottom i have seven which represents the um, exactly the, the the top four bits but never mind just forget this point so i have f f f f f but i have to write the number from bottom to top right i have to start to write seven f f f and here i need to use the recursion magic let's watch the program i have this program here which is called recursion magic i have a number a base symbols in this case i have the the ones for the hexadecimal representation and of course the base value then i call my magic recursive uh, function that takes the number in this case this is a random number then a base value which is 16 because i have 16 symbols and then of course it's gonna take the symbols themselves then it's gonna do its magic we're gonna watch this program in c tutor it's gonna be simpler okay we are in c tutor i've passed the code and now we can visualize the execution of this program all right let's start we have our number we have our series of symbols you see and then we have the base value which is 16 i repeat to you because we have 16 symbols this is extremely clear this, with the array is extremely clear the symbol and its value of course f is equal to the value 15 okay the position is the value that's a big idea all right then we call our recursive magic function the recursive magic is going to do something peculiar and if you struggle with this concept which is to my opinion a very difficult concept i made a video which was for my nephew 10 years old nephew and he understood recursion with the video which i think is the highest form of recognition if a kid can understand recursion or if your grandma can understand recursion namely the bullshit you're explaining to him it means that there is something <laughs> there is something valuable i'll leave you a link so maybe you can check by yourself i try really to explain the concept in a tremendously easy way i struggled a lot with the concept of recursion so maybe i can i can help you if you understand recursion top let's keep with the video basically here i have the first condition which is if the number is major the base value in this case i have this number it is not major the base value what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call again the function magic this time with number divided by the base value you see so again boom another scope another function but this time with the value that has changed right the input is changed because we have this number divided 16 okay again same condition false so i call another function i call another function this time with the value 215 215 is major than 16 another function boom 13 so we reach this function scope that has the value 13 base value of course is always the same and then we have a pointer to the symbols so what do we do in this case the number 
is not major than the base value so the recursion is finished so i keep going on with my symbol i have to find my symbol which is my symbol well my symbol is the number mod base value do you understand what i'm doing the number for this specific recursion call is 13 13 mod 16 is equal to 13 right what am i gonna do i'm gonna put the symbol which is in position 13 namely this d inside my variable symbol and then i do this operation which of course is just for pedagogical reasons so this is verbose redundant i would say not correct but just to let you understand really well what is happening so let's keep going on with the code i have my letter d in my char and then i say while at base symbols is different from my symbols namely while in the first case base symbols point to zero it's different from my symbol which is d what do you do well you increase the pointer look carefully at the pointer now see i'm searching from my symbol inside all my symbols i go on i go on i go on i go on and then i will stumble upon my char d which is equal to my symbol so what do you do you go on and you print the symbol boom you have d you see with recursion i went to the bottom of the division algorithm i start printing from exactly the symbol that i want look look at this recursion the send at the bottom so this series of calls which in this case we have four right we have four calls look at the parallel with the code i did before i have one level two level three level and four level but we need to read this from bottom to top namely d seven e five that's exactly what i am reproducing with this recursion you see i repeat to you try to understand extremely well recursion because that's a very important tool in your toolbox watch my video my friend i assure you you will understand okay we keep going on with our recursion then i have my d printed and then we go back to the previous scope i do the same i have my symbol what is my symbol i have number mod 16 okay so my symbol is seven Again, I keep going on. I search for my symbol. I repeat to you, this is just to see what I'm doing. I'm searching for a symbol inside my series of symbols. I reach seven, I print seven. Same with the previous scope. I keep going on, I keep going on, I keep going on. I find my symbol, boom, I print it. You see, I have D7A in the output. And then we reach the first call of the recursion that is gonna search for the symbol phi boom found and it's gonna print d7 e5 d7 e5 you see with recursion i can mimic this division algorithm writing from bottom to top okay so we are done we are done with our function okay of course i repeat to you i don't have to have a variable with my symbol i don't have to search for my symbol inside my set of symbols I, I just immediately can print my symbol with this operation and be mod base value i will show you in the in the real program okay this is just for pedagogical reason i hope you understand the point that here i can have all the symbols for example i can have uh, qwerty again that's the same concept of before right i go on and then i'm gonna search inside my symbol the letter r as the value 13 so i have my first letter which is r let's do with pony vif which is an octal base system pony vif uh, so it's gonna be a base system of value 8 an octal base system let's see this time what is going on let's go very fast this time i have my set of symbols and you see i go pretty down in my recursion right look i have all the division algorithm that it's pretty visible here right you have the first the second the third i go at the bottom of this list and then i print all the charts I search for my charts inside my symbol sets, you see? And then I have my uh, value that is going to be printed in this fancy base system, you see? I hope you're getting the point of this concept of symbols and values. Okay, my friend, let's go to the exercise itself. So you have all these base systems, right? With specific symbols. You understood this point, I guess. Then we have some constraints. For example, the function must handle negative numbers. And then we have some base constraints for example we don't we saw before right we cannot have plus double characters or the the base is empty so let's start from the main function i told you before that i'm using command line arguments you don't need to know by now but very easily here i have a number and here i have my base symbols basically a string and an integer here i have to use my 
at all to convert the first argument because all the command line arguments are string. But here I could have written, for example, 42, and here I could have written my base symbols, like for example, 01 or pawn a vif. You get the point. Then I call my function ft put number base, giving as an input the integer and then the series of symbols. Cool. So we jump inside the function, which is which is this one. I use the put number base function just to make all the constraint controls. Okay. So first of all, I need to know what is the base value, namely how many charts, how many symbols does this base have? Okay. So I need simply to loop inside this string and count the number of symbols. So we start from zero and then I have this while loop. I'm going to say while base, which is a string in position base value, it's going to start from zero. Namely, until I have a symbol inside my string and I'm not stumbling upon the sentinel value zero at the bottom, I'm going to count all the elements. I think it's super easy for you right now, right? I'm going to use the symbol value itself as a Boolean value. When I stumble upon the zero, it means uh, that I don't have any other symbol. In between, I'm going to do the check if there is some plus or minuses, because this is a constraint of the exercise, you see. If the base contains plus or minuses, this is an invalid argument, so nothing should be displayed. So with this while loop, I search the value of my base, namely how many symbols that base has, and I do a check. I do a check if this base is valid. All right. And I say, if base value is minor than two, return. It means that I have uh, zero or one symbols. And this is the other constraint here. It doesn't make any sense to have only one symbol to represent a value. It is impossible. Or you have, for example, if you have the value 42, you have 42 symbols. Like one object, one symbol. You cannot do any combinatorics, which is tedious. It's possible, but tedious. And then we have the last constraint, which is if double char base, namely this is a function ad hoc that I've made, uh, we will check later, that search for double chars inside the, the symbols. Of course, if I have two equal symbols that have the same value, it's going to be tricky to understand. Namely, it's going to be impossible to understand, which is the value of the number in that specific base. So you see here, I have all the checks and then I get the base value of my specific base. Then I am able to call my print number function, which is the real meat of the program. I, I give as an input the number, the base value, for example, base 16, the base 2, and so forth, and the base symbols. So for example, here I have 42, base value 16, and the 16 symbols. Okay, let's jump inside the print number function. And this is a recursive function. That's why I really prompt you to understand fucking well recursion this is important watch my video again repeat to you so you can understand what is going on but because basically all this fancy algorithm is three lines is three bloody lines this is just a preliminary stuff but the real stuff is three lines so you can solve this problem in three lines that's amazing with recursion so what do i do beforehand i declare a long i declare a long and inside this long I'm gonna put the value n. Why am I doing this? Well, because I want to trick the overflow. I made a video before, which is this one, in which I explain uh, the concept of overflow. There is a section overflow. Go check it out. Because otherwise, uh, there's there are gonna be problems with uh, maximum negative integer. But I think by now you understand this concept. If you reached this level of the PC, and you know this stuff. So here, here I do the switch. I take the number from an integer and I switch and I put inside a long integer data type. I repeat to you, I'm going to trick the overflow. And then I say, if number long is minor than zero, I can invert it. I invert it with no overflow issues because I repeat to you, I have more space. So I don't really care anymore about the overflow. And then I just print the minus. So this is for handling the minus numbers. Then I'm going to enter my recursion deal. You see? And the recursion is pretty easy. I say if uh, number long is major than base value, for example, if 42 is major than 16, what do you do? You recall the same function. What is going to happen? Well, you recall the same function with 42 div divided by its value, which is going to be in our case 2. Six, uh, 42 divided 16 is going to resolve in 2, and then with the same inputs. This in the second case is going to be skipped, right? Because the number is not anymore negative. It cannot be. So here I have again two major than base value. No, it is not. It is not major. 
So what is happening? I skip the recursive call and then I just simply put the char. What char I have to put? Well, I have the number two right at the bottom of my recursion. So I have n long module base value two mod 16. I have two here. So I take the symbol, which is in position two of my symbols. Are you getting it? That's exactly the exercise of before. I get that value to have a visual taste of this. I have the value two mod 16, I get two. So I'm gonna take the symbol, which is in position two, exactly the number two. Then again, I have to finish my previous recursion. Here I'm gonna have 42 mod 16, which is gonna be 10, right? So I'm gonna take the symbol, which is in position 10. What is that symbol? Well, is A. I'm gonna print 2A, okay? This is the algorithm, my friend. This is the meat of the exercise. Three lines. Recursion is a must for this. Okay, spend your time by yourself understanding these lines. And um, yeah, it's gonna be easy. So now we just have to understand what is happening with the double char function, right? And the function that is gonna check if there is a char twice. Here it comes. So the double char take the set of symbols and it's gonna search iteratively inside my set of symbols. So here I have again in my C tutor the function, so we can appreciate really well how it's working. I have my main function with a set of symbols, you see. In this case I have Pony Vif, which is one of the exercises, and then I call my double char. It's gonna search in an iterative fashion if there is a double char. All right, we're ready to go. We start, so we have my set of symbols, and then I have my function. I have E and J that are gonna search iteratively inside my string. So I have E and J. Then as you can see, I have a nested while loop. I have while at symbols plus I. What is this value? Well, it's gonna be while. We're gonna start from this P initially, right? And I'm gonna say J is equal I plus one. So it's gonna be one. And here I do another loop while at symbols plus J. So from one to eight right? in this case, right? And I say if at symbols plus I is equal to at symbol plus J. So if this symbol plus I, which is this P is equal to one of these ones, you're gonna return one, namely I have a double. Otherwise, you just keep searching. See, every time I'm gonna search, I'm gonna search inside my string. Then what do we do? At the second iteration, we're gonna start from one, you see, A is equal one and J is equal two. So I'm gonna search from this O, from this char, I take this O, this char here, and then I'm gonna search is there is something in this portion of the string. I'm sure that this is not equal to this one because of the previous loop. Anyway, this is simple for you. I have also a video. You made a very similar exercise with print comb in which you had some nested wilds. It is exactly the same idea. So I think you don't need any further explanation about this code, all right? Long story short, when I have uh, a double, for example, I have the number 42.8 if it's gonna work, but if I have a, a double char, it's not gonna give me back anything. Or if I have an empty base, it's gonna give me back anything. Or if I have a plus nothing, uh, plus or minus nothing, you see, every other symbol is gonna work, you see. This, for example, is a base, Is this, for example, is a binary, um base with these two symbols this is another base and uh this is another base you see you can represent whatever you want with all the symbols you have even with of course i don't know but basically every symbol you can have point and comma here you have 42 in point comma base system i hope you get the point this is not an easy exercise i repeat to you you need to very well understand the recursion and uh to understand this concept, you need to have a good mental model. I struggled a lot. So in the video I made, I created a gimmick which works for me. Not for everyone, but maybe you can get some cues. And somehow I'm able now to write this kind of recursion pretty easily. It comes in my mind like, like it, it clicks. It simply clicks. It's a thing that it's impossible to explain explicitly. You have to understand from internally. It's I, I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> indeed. So, that's the exercise. I hope it was clear. It wasn't easy even for me to explain, so um, I did my best, my friend. Enjoy.